you've got questions, we'll try to answer them. Uh, we spoke to a senator, um, an Oregon State Senator, her name is Senator Moniz Anderson, and she was kind enough to share with us um, how Obamacare came to Oregon. Um, as you all know, Oregon already has a health plan right now. So where does Obamacare fit into this? How, what was the process in bringing it to you? And she's going to be talking about all of this and she's going to answer some of your concerns. And it'll be really great to listen to her. Uh, we'll be showing her tape to you in a little bit. Thank you. So Senator, thank you for taking the time to talk to our viewers today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Obamacare, as you're well aware, and we're going to be talking about health care reform. Um, but before we begin, I um, found out some interesting facts about you. You're related to the guy that's behind the Simpsons cartoon show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Matt Groening is my cousin, oh. my first cousin. He's my mother's brother's son. Um, this is very, very popular show. Yes, it is. He's quite he's, the Hollywood connection you are. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome. And you live here in Oregon? And yes, I w w grew up in Oregon and have actually lived most of my life in Gresham, but I, I've lived in California and Colorado and the state of Virginia. But I became a nurse in uh, the state of Virginia, and uh, I had found out that I was going to have to be the breadwinner of the family. And so I was a research biologist, and I thought, I can't make money. So I w went to nursing school. And uh, then I applied uh, for work here in Oregon because I wanted to come back to Oregon and I went into public health. So I've been working as uh, a public health nurse for almost 20 years, um, working with drug addicted babies, drug, uh, drug addicted moms, drug affected babies, seniors, a lot of home visiting and taking care of families, crisis, families who are in crisis. So prevention and health care have been my number one um, passion in life. So is that kind of how you segue into public policy and legislation, or is yeah. there a story behind Well, there is a story behind that. <laughs> I was not uh, politically oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I always voted, and uh, I was a par um, on the Gresham Barlow School Board for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then Governor Kitzhopper um, approached me, uh, and we he talked me into running. I really didn't know what I was getting into. But I am so glad I'm the only nurse in the legislature. We really need more nurses in the legislature. It's not, um, they trust us. We, I had no idea how much health care uh, decisions were made by people who really aren't in the health care industry. So um, I'm chair of the Senate Health Policy Committee and so excited to be a part of this health care reform in Oregon. Who are the primary stakeholders um, in the health care industry? Well, as you know, health care, a lot of the stakeholders like the hospitals and the insurance companies um, like the way things are right now. And so we wanted to make sure that everyone was on board. So we brought in, of course, the hospitals and the insurers and uh, the consumers. The consumers are stakeholders. Um, we and um, the providers, nurses, chiropractors, um, uh, those that make uh, durable equipment uh, for healthcare. I mean, we and then we um, went and got input from people all over the state of Oregon on what kind of healthcare system they want. So um, we. I think just about everyone is a stakeholder in, <laughs> in health care. Um, but we had everyone at the table giving input. And I think that's why we were successful in having a very bipartisan piece of legislation pass uh, in uh, both the House and the Senate. I think people need to remember that our system is failing now. It is there. If you can afford to have health insurance, then you can have health insurance. But if you are a working family with four kids, uh, and, but just are living paycheck to paycheck, you don't have 
um, the means to afford health insurance, and that's a crime. And so those are the type of individuals that you see that are going to be covered? Yes, um, that's our intention. Okay. Now, we have, st we have Cover Oregon, which is our health insurance exchange, mm -hmm. and we have you know, a variety of people that need health care, like the homeless, um, like the single mom, mm -hmm. uh, like the small business. Um, and so um, I'm an optimist, so I'm very optimistic <laughs> that uh, we will get there. It may take some time. But the way the system is set up, we have um, incentives uh, or uh, subsidies, I should say, subsidies that are going to help uh, those families that, are, uh, that really can't afford health insurance. I'm sure there are a lot of people thinking out there, okay, I can't afford to make rent right now. How am I going to pay for health care? That's my That's day. right. So the subsidies will come in handy. Yes. Yeah. And I'm very concerned. Uh, we wanted to make sure there was an essential benefit package. There are certain things that really need to be covered. And so um, the insurance uh, that is in Cover Oregon, there are certain things that they must cover. Okay. And then there will be different, depending on which insurance you want to choose, of course, um, hopefully they'll be able to find one that will meet their, their needs. Right. And thanks to you, we will be talking to somebody from Cover Oregon, so we'll get a little more details about that. That would be wonderful, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So um, what's the difference between Cover Oregon and Coordinated Care Organization? All right. Um, the state of Oregon pays health insurance for over 800,000 people, and that's called the Oregon Health Plan. And it is about 16% of our um, uh, budget, our general fund budget, our taxes go to pay for health care for those who can't afford it. Oh, are you doing that right now? Yes, we're doing that right now. So we had to sort of divide our um, reform into two groups. One uh, we call the Coordinated Care Organization. And they are focused on the people who are eligible from the, for the Oregon Health Plan. So they are our, our very low income people. Coordinated care organizations have been up and running for over a year now, mm -hmm. and we are already seeing good things. We have so many more children on uh, that is that are getting health care coverage, uh, low income, including before we would always want to cover children and pregnant women. But now, what about the single woman or the single man, uh, young and um, needing health care? So now we are seeing that they are also becoming. Uh, eligible. eligible and actually participating. So we have added a number of people into our coordinated care organization health care reform piece. <laughs> so I'm very excited and within that year we have seen many changes. We are saving money. We have more that are eligible and are getting the health care. Um, so I'm very um, uh, uh, optimistic. Um, the numbers are showing that if you focus on people who have who use the system a lot, like those with chronic disease, those with addiction, those with asthma or diabetes, if you focus on them so that they don't have to go to the ER all, t all the time and have a primary care home, it's going to save the system m money, plus their health is going to be better. So we're seeing those changes right now with the Coordinated Care Organization. And now with Cover Oregon, which just started in October of, of 2013, um, that's going to cover the rest of the people that aren't eligible for the Coordinated Care Organization. What kind of changes do you see um, in our health care delivery system? Well, one thing, uh, our system is very fragmented very fragmented. You know, if you have addictions problems, you go over and see these providers. If you have dental health, uh, oral health problems, you go over here. Uh, if you have mental health, you go and see these providers. And if you have physical health, uh, you go here. And there is never any um, coordination or integration. And so at least with our CCO, our Coordinated Care Organization model, we are going to be looking at uh, the health care in a holistic manner. And we know that that will be better health because um, we just know that will be. We also want to make sure that our insurers are held accountable.
and that it's very transparent and that they're not taking advantage of the consumer. So there are a lot of consumer protection that is built into that. So that is another, uh, another change. Um, plus, we're going to have more people eligible and getting health care. So that's going to change. And all of these things together are going to make uh, Oregonians uh, healthier have a lifelong health, a good health care. So those are some of the changes. Another aspect, a very important aspect, is there are a lot of cultural and ethnic disparities in, in health care. And um, a lot of our providers do not understand some of these disparities that, that exist. And so we made a conscious effort to make sure that cultural competency and the health disparities that, are, that exist between the various um, ethnic populations are being addressed. We live in a very complicated time. And, and the issues aren't pleasant. And there are a lot of people hurting a lot of people hurting in our communities. Right. And, um, and so we, we, we have to address those issues. And I'm just um, honored that as a nurse, um, we are addressing some of those issues. I really, truly appreciate you. It's been a real pleasure and honor. You're the very first guest for the show that we interviewed. I know. I'm excited <laughs> to be that. Yeah. 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 And um, thank you so much for this. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Appreciate it. <laughs>